Hey guys, Steve here from Bloom Audio. Today, we've got the DAC 502 from Weiss Engineering. Weiss is a Swiss brand, and if you're familiar with you know, brands from Switzerland, you'll know that they're not known for building flashy products, but instead, uh, those with more understated designs with a lot of power and precision inside. DAC 502 is no exception to that. Um, with a very minimalistic exterior, uh, but just incredible performance inside. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. DAC 502 turns on by pushing in the volume button there. Just takes a couple of seconds to boot up. So you can see over here, uh, you've got the IR receiver for the remote and 6.3 millimeter headphone jack. We'll get to the jacks in the back in a second, but one of those is actually going to be a balanced four pin XLR connection. Should be all started up in just a second. There's a, quite a bit that goes into here. So you know you have your basics. So this LCD display tells you uh, what is your volume, your input, your mode and all of that. So, that will toggle between your front headphone, your back headphones, uh, and you can toggle the different options for that. Uh, in setup, you can set up your left-right balance, your output polarity, if you want need to reverse the stereo, um, whether you're using headphones or speakers. Uh, the um, output level is basically a gain control, so right now it's at, at the max gain. There's lower gain options available, your you know, backlight and dimmer and all of that. And then this is your network information. So this host name actually will be important later when we go into uh, using the network device options. So but every, just about everything, not quite, but close is available on the device itself. So you can see here's all of the DSP settings, DSer, vinyl emulation, creative, room EQ, headphone EQ, loudness EQ, dynamics adaptation, crosstalk canceling, which is a speaker only option, and crossfeed HP, which is a headphone only option. Uh, that room EQ is also a speaker only option. And the headphone EQ is, you guessed it, a headphone only option. So you can configure all these things on here. So some of these are easier to configure than other, like the DSer, uh, you know, you can configure, do you want it on or not? Bypass is off. And then there's two different modes, whether it's surgical or smooth. And the amount that you want to you know, do that, um, other ones are going to be a little bit more challenging, similar with like vinyl emulation and all of that. The Creative EQ gives you a parametric, a three band parametric EQ. Uh, and so you can set these options. So, you know, low shelf, and then you set your frequency. So setting your frequency and, you know, it's like that, and then you set your gain level and your Q. But it can be kind of hard to if you when you can't visualize, you're going to need like quite a bit of knowledge about the EQ in order to use that. So you can do pretty much everything on here, and there's a lot of cool features. But the real power of the device is going to come from using the web interface. So before we get to that, let's take a, a look around the back of the unit as well to see what we've got back there. Here we have your power here, obviously, uh, with a fuse right in there. We've got quite a bit of few digital inputs, uh, AES, SDIF, optical, uh, two different USB, as well as an ethernet jack, which will be important in a second. Uh, for analog, outputs for, uh, you know, for connecting to a power amp for speakers. We've got XLR and RCA. And then over here, 
is an additional headphone jack. I guess they didn't want to sully the front with any more ports. They wanted to keep it looking nice, simple, and sleek. So that one is around back. Hopefully you've got long cables for that. But yeah, so the back is, you know, pretty straightforward. All the options you would expect for digital input and analog output on the device. The options here for on the web interface are pretty expansive. There's a lot to it. So uh, we're just going to kind of go through and talk a little bit about these. So, you know, at the top, you have your very basic stuff, your volume control can be controlled through the web interface, as well as, you know, your balance and use this to select your input source or your output, whether you want to output to speakers or to headphones, you know, your gain, and then also your output polarity if you need to invert that. So coming down here, uh, we get all those DSP plugins we talked about. So the DSer is designed to sort of take some of the edge off more sibilant highs. And this is, again, a pretty subtle effect, either uh, it's surgical, which is designed to be a little more precise or smooth, which gives you a sort of a broader cut in that range. Vinyl is basically a sort of vinyl emulation. And this, again, is a very, very subtle effect, even when it's turned up a bit, just designed to, again, the, the word I keep on using here is like smooth things out. Um, just gives you a smoother, maybe a slightly warmer sound, supposed to sound more like, you know, again, a high-end analog system, a vinyl system. So on the device itself, this is called Creative EQ. On here, it's called just EQ. Uh, so it's a three-band parametric EQ that you can configure on here. And it sort of gives you live feedback. So as you're messing with the different cuts and other things, it shows you what's going on in action there uh, with the gain and other things. So you can get a really good idea of what that's going to look like on your frequency response. Uh, this is now one thing I will say, the scale is a little bit messed up. So this is not even a one dB, you know, boost in the bass and not even a one and just over a one dB cut in the treble, but it looks pretty massive on this scale. So you'll want to you know, be careful with that. But so you can choose the type of filter your frequency that you want to apply that filter out, your gain, and your Q control, which controls the width of that. Now the headphone EQ is an interesting feature. It is designed to provide specific EQs for specific headphones. All they really have in here are Odyssey headphones. So you're in luck if you've got an Odyssey headphone. Now the loudness EQ basically boosts a certain frequency that's designed to be a sort of noise cancellation. So it gives you some guidelines here. So 60 dB is supposed to help you get you know, verbal communication versus a vacuum cleaner or street traffic, which clearly I need here. Uh, you know, a sawmill, other things. Uh, so they try to give you that adjustment specifically for these sorts of background noises. Um, again, this works reasonably well. I didn't have a chance to test it against a sawmill, but it seems to, you know, help out with blocking out general background noises like verbal communication. Dynamics is essentially a, like a compression. You just choose the slider to adjust the level. So the idea here that the example they give you is using the device in a sort of party mode, you know, so that you don't have to worry as much about, oh, we gotta turn it up for the quiet song and turn it down for the loud song and that sort of thing. You just kind of turn this up to add some dynamic smoothing to the whole thing. Again, good for some things, not really great probably for your normal listening. And then we're on the headphone mode right now. So we get the cross feed, so this is just a simple slider that controls the amount that the left feeds into the right, and the right feeds into the left to give you that sense of width. 
Uh, it's a feature on a lot of things, and this one works pretty well. Now you can see here this headphone versus speaker adjustment. So if I click here, now I'm in speaker mode. So instead of crossfeed, the headphones gives you, or for speaker mode, you get crosstalk canceling which basically is designed to create stronger eye feeling of isolation between the speakers. This is a bit of a niche feature. You know, one of the things it's useful for is if you have any dummy head recordings that are you know, basically hard pan left and right recordings, this can help get that same effect with speakers. You could probably use it with any number of hard panned recordings as well. The other difference in the speaker mode is your room EQ, which is going to be similar, similar uh, EQ, but this time you get five bands and it's designed specifically to help counteract bass issues in the room. So again, you get this configurable parametric EQ that you can uh, you know, adjust here. Now, if you look down at the bottom, you'll notice that there was this uh, preset thing. So what you can do here is create different presets for different types of different DSP filters. So I can set DSer presets, vinyl presets, parametric EQ presets and all of that. And then I can combine those into global presets. So you can see here, you've got a number, so you can set, configure up to 12 total presets, each of which is a combination of your other presets. And then these can all be managed through the remote. So with all of the DSP options, DAC 502 is something that you can tune to match you know, your, your listening preferences, your headphones, your environment, or, you know, tweak however you need that. But there is definitely a, a core sound and a core philosophy behind that sound that's underneath all of that, uh, no matter what you do with the DSP. So the sound is definitely neutral with some reference characteristics, but there's also a musicality to DAC 502's sound. And so I think with that, you know, with a DAC at this level, there's a certain, certain characteristics you're expecting, a certain level of, of detail, clarity of transparency with the sound. You know, you're, you're expecting that vivid imaging and big sound stage uh, that you can deliver to your headphones. DAC 502 definitely does all of that. But there's something else in that sound that I think makes it really unique. A DAC is basically designed to connect the dots, right? Your digital file provides a number of reference points for the curve of the audio. You know, depending on the nature of the file, whether it's a you know, 128 kbps mp3 or DSD 512 file, it's gonna determine how many dots there are. The DAX job is to then, as accurately as possible, connect those dots. So, with a basic DAC, your algorithm is literally just going to connect the dots in the most efficient way possible. As you start moving up, there's an extra layer of, of sort of interpretation, you might say, in the DAC to not just try to connect the dots as accurately as possible, but to reproduce the original signal as closely as possible, that original analog signal as it was recorded. And that's where DAC 502 really has some unique personality in the way that it delivers a sound that feels analog. I, I would almost describe it as like a space and time machine going back to that original thing. And it's, it's trying to interpret out of the digital file and bring you something that sounds analog from a digital format. It's almost like the difference between, you know, your basic DAC more or less being Google Translate, right? Uh, you put in the words, it gives you the translations of that word. 
DAC 502 is like a fully bilingual live translator going through and not just delivering a cookie cutter translation of the audio, but instead giving you a accurate interpretation of the intent of what was said. There's just a, a richness to the sound and a musicality where it really is preserving that accuracy, that transparency, those reference characteristics. And I think it's where a lot of times when you say, oh, this DAC sounds analogy or it sounds musical, those become sort of code words for this DAC is overly warm or this DAC maybe sounds a little mushy at parts too. It's, it's analogy. It, it has this sort of sound. And what Weiss has done with DAC 502 is sort of flip that around to not sort of be a dirty word anymore uh, in your hi-fi setup. It really is the sound of a high fidelity analog system with digital music. Weiss DAC 502 is definitely very expensive, but for the price, you're getting something designed to really be the centerpiece of your complete audio experience, whether with headphones or speakers or both. You get the DSP features and customizability, which is something not even every DAC at this level provides. And you get this sound, which perfectly blends this reference detail, with this feeling of musicality. And in the end, what you get is not just a bunch of features that look great on a checklist, but a truly transportive musical experience. Thanks for watching. You can check out uh, Weiss's DAX and a lot of other great products at bloomaudio.com. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll be back soon with more hi-fi personal audio content.